Hi, everybody. Today, I want to discuss longevity and what are the main factors that underlie aging? You can kind of say on a physical level, there are four fundamental areas that underlie aging. One is mitochondrial dysfunction. Two is inflammation and free radical damage. Three is dehydration. And four is the shifting hormonal terrain as we age. So let's break them down. And of course, we will kind of wrap it up at the end by just talking about the other factors that are non-physical, that, that are equally important, if not more. But on a physical level, mitochondrial dysfunction is really at the root of aging and at the root of most diseases. And mitochondria are the energy factories of your cells. They produce ATP from glucose, from our diets and oxygen that we breathe. And ATP is the energy currency of the body that fuels our chemical reactions. And as we age, the mitochondria age, or really the other way around, as the mitochondria age, we age. And interestingly, mitochondria were originally derived from bacteria. At one point in our evolution, they entered our cells and then, then, then became an intracellular organelle. And the reason why we know this is that mitochondria have DNA as well, and it's very different than human nuclear DNA. Anyway, mitochondria are, are vulnerable to free radical damage because there's a lot of activity happening at the mitochondrial membrane. And mitochondrial membranes are, are comprised, like our own cell membranes are, of phospholipids. There's a slightly different composition of phospholipids in the mitochondrial membrane. But these long chain fats can be very vulnerable to oxidative damage by toxins and free radicals. And so there, there often is um, damaged mitochondria as we age, fewer numbers of mitochondria as we age, less, less recycling of damaged mitochondria and production of new undamaged mitochondria. So, so the reduction in the quality number and even size of the mitochondria as, as we age, it reduces energy production then, and then that contributes to aging and disease because the mitochondria are, you know, produce ATB that, that actually dictates the, the intracellular pH, the cell membrane potential, and, you know, of course, fuels all the chemical reactions and things like that. Um, so what can you do about that? Well, eat a diet that's loaded with healthy fats and provides the life force in high life force quotient foods that in the electrons to, to protect the membrane from damage. And it provides the antioxidants to protect the membrane. So the, the really, when you're looking at the mitochondria, one of the most important things you can do is eat a healthy diet. Now, there are new therapies on the horizon that are doing incredible things with the mitochondria. Uh, red light, for example, is being studied and shown to upregulate mitochondrial function and number. And, and the reason is that that red light in the red light, red and near infrared frequency has been shown to kind of activate particular enzymes that can get blocked in the mitochondria and liberate them to start functioning fully again, improving energy production. Red light and near infrared therapy is incredibly helpful for your mitochondria. The other thing that's helpful is shilajit. Shilajit is uh, like an herbal mineral substance that, that has been long known and discussed in Ayurvedic medicine. And 
in the modern day, research has been done to validate some of the historical observations of shilajit. Shilajit has been touted as an anti-aging substance, a uh, substance that promotes longevity, strength, vitality, energy, and now the studies are really explaining why. So interestingly, animal studies have shown that, that shilajit supplementation to mice, for example, has, has improved mitochondrial functioning and ATP levels that are so important. So there's many reasons for that that I could get into, but suffice it to say, the mineral levels that shil shilajit contains are very, very, very important for ultimately helping the mitochondria. So mitochondria. Now let's talk about inflammation. The, the, this is related to mitochondria because these, these issues are interrelated. But, but when there is inflammation in the body from immune reactions to food, to pathogens in the body, to um, imbalanced microbiome, to loss of your steroid hormones, that inflammation produces free radicals that can damage our, our cellular structures, such as our cell membranes, the, the, the kind of our neuronal cell membranes, um, the structural proteins, even the collagen in our skin, muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, et cetera, can get damaged by inflammation-induced free radicals. So, so it is vital that you eat the right diet for you that is not promoting excessive amounts of, of inflammation and thus free radicals. In fact, free radical damage is really what is potentially like in many cases, the nidus for cancer because free radicals are damaging the DNA. Not in every case, but in very many cases. So, so anyway, um, that's inflammation. So what can you do? Eat the right diet for you that's healthy, full of high, high electron containing high life force quotient foods that naturally have antioxidants to quench those free radicals and, and don't overconsume sugar and carbohydrates and reduce your consumption of chemicals in the form of pesticides and herbicides and, and dyes and additives and things like that. So then dehydration. So again, like I said, these issues are incredibly interrelated because aging can be, is almost like it, which people shrivel up, you know, people lose height as they age because their intervertebral discs shrink and they lose skin, um, kind of buoyancy and, and, and uh, fullness because they're in, they're, their subcutaneous structures dehydrate. And it, this is, this is a, it's not just an aesthetic issue because water is vital for health and I've given a lot of information about this before, but, but basically suffice it to say that when our body is replete with water, we function as a more unified entity. We function as a liquid crystal and water acts like an amplifying conduit of energy and information from the field at large that we exist within into our biology. So it, 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 it allows for a more seamless translation of energy and information into our bodies to fuel our physiology. And what, what can we do to make sure that we don't dehydrate as we age? Well, number one, get the right amount of minerals because Macro and trace minerals and electrolytes are absolutely vital for drawing water into your cells. So basically we have these very steep gradients of electrolytes, macro and trace minerals inside the cell versus out. 
And that's that that higher concentration of many of these things within the cell draws water into the cell. Now, it's in order to keep the minerals in the cell to pull the water and maintain the water, you have to have healthy functioning mitochondria because these steep mineral gradients are produced by membrane pumps that are incredibly energetically demanding. And these, these energetically demanding pumps are fueled by ATP. So you need the healthy functioning mitochondria in order to have keep the minerals in the cell to draw the water into the cell. Okay, steroid hormone loss as we age. So known fact, adrenal hormone steroid levels tend to decline on average as you go through life from about age 30 onward. Um, gradual decline of testosterone from in males from about age 30 onward, a more precipitous decline of estrogen and progesterone and testosterone in women when they go into menopause. So what can you do? You can do things that support your adrenal glands. And if needed, you can consider bioidentical hormone replacement to replace your sex steroids. But even supporting your adrenal glands encourages your adrenal cortex to, to keep making DHEA and pregnenolone and testosterone and even estrogen at optimal levels as you age. So how do you do that? You eat regularly, don't overconsume sugar, don't consume it at all if you can avoid it, um, and don't overconsume caffeinated beverages and things that, that kind of give you a big burst of energy and then a crash. Get enough sleep and then meditate and learn how to clear your energetic anatomy and really calm your mind and balance your brain waves so that you can be in a calm, focused state as you go through your day. And that allows you to be less reactive to triggering people or situations because the reaction kind of depletes your adrenal gland um, as well as creates dissonance in your life. So absolutely vital to, to begin meditating. And now that brings me to this more kind of larger concept of really why we age. And it has to do with how well we resonate with the almost infinite energy and information in the unified field. You know, we're part of the unified field. It's, and not only are we part of it, we're derived from it. We are, along with every other aspect of our material reality, are derived from this field of energy and information. And our health depends on it. So it's really dependent upon how well we're resonating. And there are things that are going to enhance that resonance and things that are going to detract from it. Things like the negative or the information signatures of things that are out of harmony with our bodies will detract from our resonance with the field. This would be information signatures of toxins, of pathogens, of unmetabolized emotions from previous traumas, of thoughts that produce emotional responses in us that are of a depleting nature. And so, even, even other things like the, the, the choices that we make that determine our level of satisfaction in life is really going to affect how well we're resonating with the field. So when we're working on all these levels, we don't have to age in the way that we classically believe we do. You know, I'm always, I always kind of chafe when, when, it, when someone or a patient says to me, oh gosh, you know, and I'm aching and I'm really tired, but I guess I am 62, you know, or something like that. I'm always like, oh, don't say that. Like that doesn't have to be that way. 
I'm 54 and I feel phenomenal. <laughs> so I, I just don't think we need to age the way that people believe we do. And, and it really is about your belief. So, so please hold the possibility that you can age beautifully and gracefully. And yes, chronologically, your years are increasing, but biologically, your age is diminishing as you grow and become wise and clear out the dissonance, you will feel more youthful and more vital and strong and able to harness the energy and information in the field that your physiology needs to operate at its highest possible level. Thank you.